Hey, welcome to the greenhouse. I'm Alex. You know, energy radiated from the Earth's surface and gases in our atmosphere control Earth's climate. Some of the most important gases are present in really tiny amounts. When energy leaves the surface of the Earth, it strikes these gases, they vibrate, and that keeps our atmosphere warm. But sometimes people wonder if these trace gases are actually abundant enough to have any effect at all on the climate. If a molecule like carbon dioxide is just a trace gas, what are the chances that an infrared photon would even strike a CO2 molecule and make it vibrate? Well, why don't we calculate how many CO2 molecules are present in a much smaller volume of air? How about a one liter bottle? And even though that might sound like a complicated calculation, I can actually do a quick and simple version in my head. But you know what? Since this is a video, I'm going to write it down for you. So come on. Most of the atmosphere is composed of nitrogen and oxygen. These two gases are transparent to visible sunlight and infrared energy. Other gases that are important in Earth's climate system are much less abundant. They're trace gases, a gas with an abundance of less than 1% of the atmosphere. Some of the most important trace gases, like carbon dioxide and methane, also happen to be greenhouse gases, gases that absorb infrared energy emitted by the Earth. Carbon dioxide's abundance right now is 415 parts per million. That is, for every million molecules of air, 415 of those are CO2. CO2 is called a greenhouse gas because it's transparent to incoming visible light, just like the glass in a greenhouse. But, just like glass, it also absorbs the outgoing infrared energy. When molecules absorb energy, they vibrate and cause motion that warms the atmosphere. But if there are only 415 CO2 molecules in a million molecules of air, how likely is it that an outgoing photon of energy would even hit a CO2 molecule? Instead of trying to think about the whole atmosphere, let's work with a more manageable volume, a one liter bottle. I'm gonna do what's called the back of the envelope calculation, and I'm actually gonna do it on the back of an envelope. When we're working with gases, we need to work in units of moles. A mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. This is called Avogadro's number. To simplify the calculation, I'm gonna use six times 10 to the 23 molecules. What's the volume of a mole of gas? At standard temperature and pressure, zero Celsius and one bar, that's 22.4 liters. Can you visualize 22 liters? That would be 11 two liter soda bottles. Since I'm doing this in my head, I'm gonna round off 22 liters and call it 20, or two times 10 to the one. Now we're gonna divide the coefficients, six divided by two is three, and subtract the exponents. 23 minus one is 22. So we've got three times 10 to the 22 molecules per liter. Using scientific notation makes this easy because I work with the exponents and the coefficients separately, and each of these are pretty simple math problems. So that's the number of molecules of air in the liter. But remember, CO2 is a trace gas. Do we know what its concentration is? Yes, in fact, we do. The National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration keeps track of this every day. Right now, the concentration of CO2 is 415 parts per million, which I'll round to 400. So that's 400 times 10 to the minus 6, or 4 times 10 to the minus 4. So 3 times 10 to the 22 molecules of air per liter times 4 times 10 to the minus 4 is 12 times 10 to the 18th molecules of carbon dioxide per liter of air. That's 12 billion billion molecules per liter. Okay, so there are 12 billion billion molecules of carbon dioxide in a liter of air. So maybe we're asking the wrong question. Instead of asking what are the chances that a photon would actually hit a CO2 molecule, maybe the question we ought to be asking is how could it possibly miss?